Did George Romero's The Crazies affect Donald Trump's handling of the coronavirus? Let's find out in episode 3 of Obscure Armor. Hello, I'm Sam Ashes. This is Obscure Rama, uh, my regular look at one of my favourite ever cult movie books, the Psychotronic Encyclopedia of Film. Um, here it is. Uh, yeah, there it is. Beautiful book, um, full of amazing films. Uh, if you want to know more about that, uh, watch episode one, uh, where I, I talk about it in more detail. Um, anyway, uh, this week uh, we are going to be taking a close look at George Romero's The Crazies, which is uh, an incredible film which has a lot of resonance today. The film opens cold with a shot of a farmhouse. We then go into a really, really elegant sequence. Uh, we get a little boy trying to scare his sister for fun. Now, that's what horror movies are, uh, really. Uh, directors are trying to scare audiences, uh, but they do it for fun. Um, but in this film, we quickly see that this isn't going to be um, as easy a ride as, as we thought, um, with the, the disturbing sight of a little girl finding her murdered mum, and then a deranged dad trying to set her brother on fire. And we haven't even had the credits yet. They kick in and we get the title, The Crazies. Some prints of this film have the original title, which was Codename Trixie. Distributors, or sometimes producers, will often change horror movie titles. Um, there's an example from Hex. Um, or Automata turned into The Devil's Machine. Um, now, uh, I actually love both titles there, but in this instance, I do prefer The Crazies. I think whoever changed it got it right, because it's a fantastic title. Uh, we get a burning house, uh, as though George Romero is telling us, you thought the ending of Night of the Living Dead was bleak? Well, get a load of this. You know, um, at, at the time of watching this credit sequence, for all we know, the whole family is burning to death here, um, which is pretty disturbing. Now, this bit of production value was actually a bit of luck. Some local firefighters were actually burning down uh, a building for practice and said that George Romero could film it. Um, so that's a little kind of piece of advice for any kind of low budget independent filmmakers. Make the most of your surroundings, make the most of your contacts, um, because obviously um, this burning building adds so much production value to these credits and um, would obviously cost quite a lot of money if, um, if George wanted to just do it um, off his own back. So. Um, yeah. Now we get some fun couple stuff next, and it's established that our leads are going to be uh, a firefighter, David, and a nurse, Judy. Their jobs are obviously quite handy uh, in terms of perspective on the narrative. Um, again, you know, something for script writers out there. Do think about the jobs your characters have, obviously. Uh, now I really love this shot, uh, frame within a frame stuff always gets me in and this is a lovely example. Then we get some seamless exposition with a little escalation. We find out that soldiers are in town and I'm sure, I'm sure that'll be fine. Our nurse Judy goes to the hospital and we get a bleak bit of visual storytelling. Also uh, that outfit which is very on trend for 2020. I mean the gas mask, obviously. Then we get a conversation that feels very COVID-19. Note about this for days. We never thought it would happen. But you notified me. You must have suspected. Notifying you was precautionary. We never thought it was possible. Right, so this next bit is a bit weird considering the current global situation. That is correct. With the ultraviolet light operative, there is no need for your masks. We want all medical personnel to wear their masks at all times, however. You will need masks outside the protected area, but in the ultraviolet, we're considering it safe without a mask. Did Trump see this film? Supposing we hit the body with a tremendous, uh, whether it's ultraviolet or just very powerful light. Oh no. The soldiers invade a party and there's something really disconcerting about seeing these hazmat suits against so much casual wear. 
to be honest it's also quite weird to see a party look how close together these people are oh and there's a cameo from romero there this leads into a pretty disturbing sequence as the government breaks into homes to kidnap the occupants our heroes reunite and get rounded up who else is in here well that's frank winston I don't know what's wrong with him, he seems to be sick. Yeah, I'd stay two meters away from that guy if I was you. We find out how the virus spread, and it wasn't by someone eating a bat. Plane went down in these hills above the town. Investigators reported that the casings wound up in the river, and Evans City is supplied with artesian systems out of that. Things kick off as a cop is killed by soldiers, and we get a cool shootout. Things are really escalating now and we're still only 30 minutes in. Oh, and we then get one of my favourite movie kills of all time. Cut back to the van and things are getting intense there too, as our heroes take on the soldiers unarmed and we get some unexpected kung fu. They escape and we get more super bleak stuff with some tattered American flags to underline the thematic stuff going on in this film. George is clearly anti-government. Uh, the military here is as terrifying as the disease. It's all post-Vietnam stuff, but has a very different resonance today. Oh, and we get a little more COVID-19 stuff. We're not getting anywhere trying to assign blame. Then authorize me back to the lab. I can't take a chance on breaking the perimeter with somebody that might be a carrier. Okay, fine. We're back to the good guys, and they're not going to say anything that reminds me of the current situation, right? It's like uh, all, all these people dying, and uh, my father can't feel that. You can. I know you can. I... Hey, if that chick's got the bug, we could catch it from her, right? I don't know. It depends on what it is. Well, it's a bug. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there with our hero self-isolating as there's so much more that I could spoil. We're, we're almost at the midpoint, so that's a good place to start because I don't want to ruin the ending of this film for you, um, as always. Go out and buy this film or you can stream it on the Arrow Video channel uh, through Amazon. Uh, it's on there uh, at the moment, so uh, do give it a watch. And if you enjoy the film after you've seen it, I've got another recommendation for you uh, and another book, actually. Um, so, yeah, uh, that book is One Rainy Night um, by Richard Lehman. Uh, yeah, that, I mean, that, that's it. I mean, look at the state of my copy. Uh, <laughs> I normally do true books with, with a great deal of respect, but uh, I, I, I did get that one secondhand. So anyway, um, yeah, One Rainy Night, amazing book. One of the most disturbing, harrowing, intensely violent books I, I've ever read. I couldn't believe what I was reading at certain points in this novel. Um, it's got a very similar premise to the crazies. Cursed rain falls on the inhabitants of the town. Um, as opposed to poisoned water um, in the crazies. Uh, but yeah, this cursed rain turns everyone into raging, violent psychopaths. Um, and they will use any weapon at hand to uh, decimate the people in front of them. Uh, it is uh, grueling and horrific, and I love it. So yeah, One Rainy Night by Richard Lehman. If you like the crazies, you'll like that. Um, you know, I love books as much as I love films, so it's nice to, to recommend the, the occasional book. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, until next time, um, when, when I come back, um, please do subscribe, like, uh, give us some money on Patreon if you can. Um, we need cash to keep this going, so uh, we really would. Uh, appreciate any contribution you can make if you can make a contribution um, also have a little look around everything else on the channel 
uh, Channel Hex, we've got uh, a, a very funny one minute short film that went up recently uh, by Laurie Brewster, we've got Tom Stoughton's new series um, where he, he reviews films in, in, in a way that only he can, uh, it's very funny. So um, yeah, that really is it, thank you for watching Obscurorama, please share it um, because you know, I might get cancelled if people don't watch this show. Loads more people watch Tom's show than watch my show, so if you can give it a share, please do, because if you don't, I, I will get fired. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the movies. If you enjoy our crazy videos, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell notification icon, and also leave us a comment and let us know what you thought. If you would like to support our channel and help us make more weird videos like this, then also check out the Patreon link, which will show up about now. Okay guys, thank you so much, so much, and goodbye.